Hi there and welcome back to our let's roleplay of the Horde of the Black Sheep, Karakorn Yunlu. And uh, there is even more things to do before we can let the time run. A very deep analysis last time, I hope. Maybe you have something to add. There is more, there is more. Uh, there is more to do, basically. So um, we have to solve some problems. Among them, uh, that this whole part of our country is a non-accepted culture. And it is nearly 40% of our country. And we still, after looking closer, we still should have it as a non-accepted part of our, <laughs> of our nation again, crazily. And uh, so we got to do something. Also, I'm really, uh, I find this, the, the treasury system here really strange. I mean, I've uh, adjusted to army maintenance and now we're at minus uh, 0.5. And now we're here at the plus. The previous monthly balance was 1.04. So this is the coming balance and we need to correct something there. We need to correct the fort maintenance, but before we do that, we need to know who our rivals should be. We need at least two rivals, or we're not taken seriously. And one of the rivals is these guys, Ajam. They have split up from the Timurids, and uh, so Timur has a lot of claims on Ajam, which means they might be attacked. This is uh, a part of the, the realm of Timur the Great, who died, though, and now his children are fighting. Or, I mean, you don't know how many children such a horse lord has, but you would bet he has endurance and so many children and many states that have come out of the Timurid Empire. So, I pick a jump. They are also the ones considering us a rival and hating us most, so a jump it is. Come on. There we go. By setting a jump as a rival, that they are our rival, we will announce yes. So we've got that. We also want it to improve relations with Shervan. Um, why do I now go for the missions? Because they might change when we go for more rivals. So we really want to improve relations with Shervan. They are a good neighbor and they are also Shiites. And we want to have them as allies. That's one thing. And we also want that pitiful little shikedom here as allies. Did we? Ah, yeah. So uh, the next day we can we can have these guys as allies. We want to, of course, improve the relations. That is the natural thing to do. And now we can set more rivals. The Mamluks, ah, that would be a little bit risky. I I really don't want the Mamluks. Who can we take to? Our old enemy, Ak Koyunlu. They are our historical enemy and they have led to the downfall of Kara Koyunlu in real history. After, yeah, our current Shah uh, died. In a fight with him, his son had to take over, and he was really bad. And then Korakon Koyundu disappeared in a very, very short time. We're going to make them our rivals as well. They're also Shiites, uh, I think. No, they are Sunites, actually. They have changed. Uh, and... Yeah, why not? Jahan Shah... He's still young, so hopefully he'll be able to see this out because, as you can see here, this is our son and we really were not happy with him. I mean, uh, 
the only thing we can do together with him is play uh, play some chess or something like that. He's uh, he won't beat us though. He is not the mass tactician. He's more an administrative guy, and he's maybe a little bit playful, or maybe he's like knowledgeable about numbers, but only some. Sultan Jahan Shah of Karakur Yunlu is like a considered the circumstances a genius and so he's not tending to extreme measures. He has a balanced set of skills. He wants to um, know now that we have Ark Koyunlu. Oh, I have always had to concentrate before I say that. And a jam as rivals. What shall we do with our fortresses that are costing us so much? And we should really consider consider that to not maintain the Baghdad fortress. It could be ah. Uh, kind of risky but we'll now i mean we i think we have to do this we'll now denounce the sect practices because that will stabilize the country that is something that even a bold fighter knows with these values that you need a stable country to launch the next bold attack So we're going to denounce sect practices. We'll condemn any form of sect practice and declare all practitioners heretics. We move towards legalism, which is affecting our ability to convert, but not by much, thankfully. So we can still convert. And that is also what we want to do. Convert provinces. But there's also something we also want to do. These guys are not paying for themselves. And um, the question is, can we afford them? I think we can afford Daniel Damadian, the Coptic Armenian born in Yerevan. He's, uh, yeah, I, I think he's he's getting around 0 0.5 gold per month. So he's, yeah, he's at least 50% paying for himself. So we can take him. We could promote him, but that is uh, too much. We won't do that. We... I think we don't need um, a military skill advisor at the moment. That may change, though. If we take one, Iskander Nguyen will be the one. Definitely, because National Manpower Modifier is very important. Reinforce Speed is not important at the moment. We already have increased Reinforce Speed. Um, then we'll go for... Pir Budak Yusuf to improve our relations more quickly. We want to repair our relations with our vessels and we want to build relations, as I said, with Shervan and probably with Ardabil. So we want to build the relations quickly. That is also very important. So they have our back and we have their back. I mean, they are not threatened by a lot of countries. Maybe except a, a jam, so it will be a good alliance. And they are also shared, so we also feel a need to protect them a bit. We're not the defender of the faith, but there's that feeling if there's more Shiites out there, there's more friends out there. And uh, that will be very good for us so who about that plan you know i talked last time about the plan to um, change the accepted cultures that will have to wait a bit 
And not only until we have 120 diplomatic power to make it instantly possible, but also there's another possibility to, to do what we can do here. Armenian doesn't need to be removed, really. We have Ganja. Okay, that sounds wrong somehow. And we have Yerevan. And we can convert these quite easily or at least um, go on here Nakchivan I mean we have Nakchivan and Yerevan and we can convert these and then we can convert the culture to our natural culture of Azerbaijani And that then, if we have converted these two, it will remove the need to demote this culture and we'll get to accept Bashriki. So um, the other thing is, we also have a fortress there that I think can be mothballed there. It is fully maintained at the moment but uh, it's costing us too much. So we'll mothball this too and uh, be hopefully happy to have more income again. Fort maintenance is uh, a little bit less now. So there is more to mothball maybe. I mean, I think we have... Have we mothballed Baghdad? Yeah, we should mothball Baghdad. And then we have our estates. So, um, let me get this clear. The, the plan is... In the state of Armenia... We want to convert the state of Armenia to Shia. And then we want to convert all the uh, states in there, uh, the East states in there, to our primary culture of Azerbaijani. And then we will have one free slot for a promoted culture, and that will be this culture, Mashriki. So that's what we're going to do, and to go to Armenia then and make our task a little bit easier. We'll enforce religious unity. We're sure. Where should we start first? Uh, probably where we are quicker. 1.9% we would have here. And in Yerevan. 1.3%. Maybe we should start with this because it will be harder to convert um, after this one is converted. Because of our move towards legalism. So <laughs> we'll start with Yerevan to convert. Then the last rival could possibly be the Great Horde, but we'll probably not reveal that already. It might not be uh, possible, or might not be a good thing. We were at the Estates. We want some con contribution from the Merchant Guilds. And it will be okay, it will be definitely be okay. And we have a little bit of more money, which is direly needed for us. And then... Uh, there is more to do. I think it would be good to ad demand administrative support and make a generous donation. I think it might be good. But how to get more out of the treasury then? 
we don't really have a good idea yet because we're in a little bit of trouble here total expenses are quite high question is what to do these are our advisors as you can see the advisor half pays for himself but only half and uh, there's a thing I want to try we want to give Baghdad with the inland center of trade to uh, the state of the merchant guilds to increase the local trade power by a lot uh, 12 plus 50 percent will be what 18 that should be good hopefully so you'll get that merchant guild at least for now at least for now hopefully this will increase our trade in the long run so that's going on that's quite good and now <laughs> yeah more inland centers of trade so our natural expansions are here towards Persia and here towards Basra probably more towards Persia first which means we want to control more from Ajam which is our rival anyway so um this is our reign and we hope we hope to progress quickly here i mean ah, we'd really like to have these guys but they are too expensive we just cannot afford them the fort maintenance when we're at it is also something hmm we go there we could send a merchant uh, to collect but that is absolutely not needed we're just increasing the value and hope that it will be good with the increased uh, influence of the merchants so if things go very dire we can always also uh, make Maybe we should do that right now. We can mothball Mosul. That should uh, help too with the forward maintenance. And help us again for a while. Let's have a look at these states. The merchant guilds are quite happy now that they have gained so much territory. And uh, we could also ask for diplomatic support, but I think we won't do that. Or will we? Hmm. Gaining influence, 20 loyalty loss. Yeah, we could do it. We could do it. It, it would be bad. Trade efficiency plus 10 at the moment. We could demand some support and we'll grant them monopoly charters so we're back at normal then this is still open to us i mean make a generous donation and demand administrative support hmm. we don't want to move towards legalism at the moment So, the interesting thing would have been to get the Inquisitor, but the Inquisitor is someone we cannot afford at the moment. So, at the next, at the next state of this, we'll try to do that. I mean, the administrative power and the dinner stone, we'll leave that for now. We could impose a new religious tax now, but lose 15 loyalty. And 
Yeah, the the dimmy. So what effect will it will it will it be? Increasing our technology cost and decreasing the tolerance of heathens is that is something we just cannot afford at the moment. So we're we're not going to impose a new tax. The Amirs mm, we could demand support and then hmm, call for a diet. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we could do it. They don't get a lot of influence. They get more. So we will call for that diet and uh, gain the points here. A little bit less prestige now, but that is quite okay for now. Oh, let's wait for a day. A mere day. Sherman is now under our belt and now we want to go for Ardabil also because they are connected to Jilan, which we also want to rule as a Shiite state. Maybe they'll go... No, not yet. We'll go Ardabil. Let's confirm. And we can send Drachan Shah Nazar somewhere to improve relations. Can we send him to Sherman already? Not really, right? But I have to wait a month. So we'll send him to one of our vassals. Bitlis. They are not happy. We'll improve relations with them. And we also need to look at our other subject, Karabakh. Here. We could also try to improve relations here. They are Coptic too, so we might go for something like uh, a conversion in time, when we can do that. For now we want to improve the relations towards them. That will be extremely helpful. And if the culture here Armenian in Armenia. Yeah, and we're converting. So everything is nice. We'll, we'll, we'll take this day after day. Come on, it will only be uh, so long before <laughs> whatever happens, happens, right? <sighs> A royal marriage offer from Sherman. That's really something we want to have. Improving our relations even more. Marriage. Umu Gulsum is our new Sultana. Oh, what a nice Sultana. Naturally, she's not versed in the matters of war, but she's a masterful diplomat. And she's also quite a very, very capable administrator. And that is a wife fitting for Sultan Jahan Shah from Sherwin. Very good. Very good indeed. What is coming here now? A gathering storm. The aging ruler of the Timurid Empire, Shah Rukh, has been ill since the beginning of 1444. In his absence, his wife, Gohashad, 
had taken over the daily rule of the empire, but this sign of weakness has set wheels in motion among the princes that rule the Timurid provinces. In western Iran, the young prince Muhammad Bayosom Bison Kor, an ambitious grandson, has started to accept taxes and tokens of loyalty from a much larger region than his assigned governor governorate. Having finally recovered and learned of this insolence, Shah Rukh has now declared Muhammad Bison Kor a rebel and is moving to strike at him at the first opportunity. A civil war among all sons and grandsons like that at the end of Timur's life is to be avoided, Shah Rukh knows he must strike down any sign of rebellion harshly and quickly. Only time will tell what the other princes will do. As long as Shah Rukh lives, the ruler of the Timurids will greatly reduce the liberty's desire of the remaining vassal countries ruled by his sons and grandsons. And we have gained the humiliate rival. The humiliate rival Kaiser's Belly against Ak Koyunlu, which is quite, quite good for us. But we have another royal marriage over from Ardabil. Of course, yes. Yes, definitely yes. The beautiful daughters will be ours. Our income has risen a little bit, mainly from trade that has improved a lot through the giving of Baghdad, Let's see its new trade power, to the merchants, to the burghers, as they say here. And we should consider giving more to the burghers, but I mean, we, we cannot give our capital. That would be uh, really strange. And we don't really have more to give. That's our capital. Yeah, we, we will not... <laughs> we will not give it over. Yeah, that, that would be... Uh, unfitting. We have one more diplomat and we should really send it to Sherwin. Is it now possible? Oh, at the 12th of December. We don't want to miss it, so we're just uh, hugging the diplomacy screen right now. Oh, already something is coming with our great and beautiful Sultana Umugulsum. She has impressed many men and women at court with her sharp wit and extensive knowledge of the natural world. She has long been a collector of tomes on botany and chemistry, and she corresponds with several of our generation's brightest minds. Currently, one of these scientists are visiting our court as per our sultana's invitation. Oh yeah, we need to reform Karakun Koyunlu. Actually, we, we seem to be progressive, right? They can be found discussing all sorts of new theories far into the wee hours of the night. Sultana Umugulzum has asked us to make the scientist an offer, claiming that she would make a much better advisor than the treasurer Teniel Damadian we currently employ. Hmm. We could get a Shiite scientist with production efficiency plus 10%. Or we will ask Tamil Damadian to work harder. Hmm. Azerbaijani heritage, following the Shia faith. Advise us 50% cheaper. How is our treasurer? Yeah, I thought so. How is our production? Hmm. Now, we're, we're role-playing this, right? And what would a, would a sultan do if he knew that he has a beautiful and very apt sultana? And she has this great friend who will come to work at a reduced price. 
He even has the Shia faith, not the Coptic faith. And he's even as a Bajani of our primary culture and not Armenian. I mean, we love Tamil Damadian all the way, but Sultana Umur Guzum has a point. We shall invite her acquaintance to stay. And he's also called Jahan Shah Hassan. He's like our namesake. Really? Wow. I mean, he costs us a lot more, but we have to do this. And this is the role play. This is the role play. And it's not a bad choice, too. Whoa. We're going to be ruined before the end of this Let's Play. But, I mean, come on. It's our namesake. Even our namesake. And our production really goes up through that. And through that also the trade income. How's the provincial unrest in Yerevan? It's unbearable. We might have to do something there. They might have to send our army. That's the first thing. And we we need to recruit a general. And we'll I think we'll invest the military power in recruiting a general. Our ruler is much too valuable. And Jahan Shah Turmush. Yeah, why not? Why not? Now, um, this is a let's role play. And if you come up with fitting names for our generals or other advisors that we can recruit and name, please tell. Please tell. It will be definitely uh, considered and uh, you'll be immortal or at least you will have some game years right and look at this guy <laughs> what uh, sent him to to Jerevan and probably will give them a harsh treatment as well the unrest Coptic zealots, of course. Mm, we still got some time, I think, before this gets out of hand, so... Ah. Let's just send the army over and hope for the best. Antikrit, it also works. In Baghdad, too. Are the unrest here? Friendly troops, yeah. It's okay. Um, maybe we should increase the army maintenance a bit. I mean, it's ruining us, but what can we do? Nothing else can we do. Absolutely nothing else. We have to find a possibility to get, to get more money. And... The only possibility we have at the moment would possibly be to mothball more fortresses. As we don't want to lead a war at the moment, but probably we should fully maintain the one in Yerevan as there is trouble at the moment. And in Tabriz... It is mothballed too, so. Fort maintenance in Yerevan is fully paid. The progress is really slow. In five years, so we have to endure this for five years. Wishes luck. <laughs> Wish us a lot of luck, better. Ah, military alliance of Ak 
Ko Yunlu with the Ottomans. Okay, I know who we're not going to attack. What are they planning? If the Ottomans attack us, we're toast. At least at this point. Mm, we can speed it up a little bit, I think. Ajama threatening our trade. Trade dispute. Should show them superiority, but we'll wait for a good moment to do this. To free our people there. Ah, we have one available diplomat. And uh, we don't have anyone working in Ardabili. In Ardabil, I mean. They would help us with the trade power. Sherwan would help us as well. But we want to improve the relations first. Ardabil. We want to get it to the top. And then we'll see how we can where we can go from there. Also, I, have, I usually feel a lot safer with uh with at least one stability, but it seems like we have no choice here at the moment. We'll just have to take what we can. Hormuz, is there isn't there a better trade node that we could send stuff forward in? Not really, eh? Here we have 1% influence, here we have 5% influence. That's at least a little bit better. Now, Ajam has been declared war on, and Ajam has accepted an offer to hire some regiments from Mazandran. That was to be clear. Now, already, already we have to consider what to do. What would happen if we declared on Ajam? What are their allies? They're allied with Nogai and with Biapas. Biapas is here. Nogai is up there. Very dangerous. What allies do the Timurids have? Allied with Haza and Dawazir. Haza is a little bit laughable. Davazir, they are far away, but they will probably reach the war too. So this is a very interesting situation. There's a decision to be made quite soon. Not yet though, we, we still have a little bit of time. Once a jam is a little bit exhausted against the Timurids that are, I think, far stronger, we might come and strike them. And strike them down like the uh, the wild hordes they are. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Can our states help us somehow? We could impose a new tax. Hmm. If everything goes wrong, we'll impose a new tax, but then we'll be in big trouble. So nothing here yet. <laughs> we can promote mercantilism. With all the diplo power we have. What would be good would be a marketplace too. We'd have a higher trade range. But at the moment, it might just be better to promote the mercantilism. Because 
we will ha in a long time we will have no possibility to um, to build marketplaces so we should probably promote mercantilism by one percent starting now there we go and we get just a tiny 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 bit more yeah but we want to have a stack up so we want to keep this diplomatic power for now So we're waiting and we're thinking about how to get more money. That's a big question. Otherwise everything is going well. That is a little bit critical. Now, how many regiments of Coptic zealots would rise up? Hmm. Ten K. Ten K. Yeah, well, they're still not that critical, so. We can save some money. <laughs> That's really the main thing, right? That's our ad what our advisor costs us. It also brings us a lot, though. It brings us a lot of administrative power. And there's the question, if we can use that administrative power somehow uh, to improve our income by a lot, a mosque would be extremely good to build we could wait for the administrative technology and then build mosques with with loans even probably at that rate we could of course always debase the currency Increasing corruption by two, and then work our way out of the corruption. Hmm. Well then, Mush Mushasha have the goal to claim Khwazania as their own. Hmm. And Ajam, they, they want to call Katabriz their own. Well, they can't do that, but they will lose the war and then we'll be ready. Improve some more relations, uh, at least in... Uh, are we improving here? Hopefully we are. Yes, um, we'll improve relations in Sherman, and when we have this done, we'll move a diplomat here to claim some stuff. Claim, claim maybe Myane or uh, Kirman Shah from Ajah. Friends in need, though. Sherman, the Sultan of our illustrious Sultan Umugulsum, recently brought us a request from her family, the House of Durban Dead of Sherman. Apparently, Shah Ibrahim, fir the first administration, is in a great disarray, and he has asked us, his most trusted friends, if we can help in any way. His letters filled with compliments on our talented bookkeepers um, and bureaucrats. Whoa, um, no, we will send some of our best administrators to help them. And we've instantly completed the mission. Foreign contacts. Diplomatic reputation goes up by one. 
We can now invite a scholar, Jafari. Let's see who we can invite. Jafari lose 50 administrative power and we'll get 10% more shock damage for 20 years. And I think this is, this is good. Shock damage is prevalent in these times, so we'll invite the Jafari. But should we invite him now? That's the question. We can invite him as long as they have 150 opinion of us. Oh yeah, we should invite him now if we don't want to continue this. We'll invite him over, the Jafari. Because the plan is also to attack a jam. Nice. So, we have new missions. We have new missions. Save the Azerbaijani people in Mianne. Hmm. Hmm, <laughs> our brothers in Myanmar are being cruelly persecuted. We have been courted by representatives of many of the major cities in the area who are insisting that they will do whatever they can to help integrate their region into our country if we only free them from their oppressors. That would be really good. And then we have the rival of our rival is Imereti. Hmm, mm, yeah, that would be an easy mission compared, uh, but... But no, I think this fits, this fits us with Ajam attacking us, basically, diplomatically. We now want to save the Azerbaijani people in Myanne, as they are in trouble too at the moment. This seems to be the perfect opportunity. Our brothers, we will help them. Again, the conquest castle spell against Ajam. We can take Miane. Hopefully, we can. They are allied with Nogai and Biapas, as I've already said. But that won't be that much of a problem. Nogai is far away a bit. And they probably cannot cross all the way. And even if they can, they are not that strong. And Biapas. Yeah, that's Biapas here. Yeah. That's Biapas for you. A split country with not a lot of power. Very, very underdeveloped. So mm, we won't be in trouble for them. So, that much for the plans. And also... Mm -hmm. Oh, that. Come on. I'm always looking for the... Great things we can do here. Yeah, government. We can collect tribal allegiance if we attack and are victorious. So... That will be a good thing to have. And the Jafari scholars come in like as a gift from our great god. So, things are looking good. Thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. Ah, what should we say as Kara? What do you say as a Shiite? Probably Inshallah or something like that. Or Allahu Akbar? I don't know. It was certainly uh, only meant well in these times. So uh, thank you for watching and we'll see each other in the next episode when we... Uh, lead the power of the black sheep maybe already to Mianne 
Maybe we have to stop our, our missionary here. It would be a pity, but we might have to do it and invade a jar. So see you then and have a good time until then.